Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett, and this is not a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. This is actually a sequel, an addendum, to my last episode, Aliens Abducted My Dog. As I promised all of you, I wanted to play the complete audio tape of the interview with John and Ellen Trasco, who had an experience in Everettstown, New Jersey. So what I'm going to do is just do a quick recap of their case and then play for you the complete one hour and 20 minute audio tape in which they describe their experience in their own words. So this episode is an addendum which I call Aliens Tried to Abduct My Dog. I hope you enjoy it. Again, if you want to read more about cases like these, check out my book, Not From Here, Volume 5, in which I describe more than two dozen cases involving UFOs and canines. But old Frisky <laughs> did not allow himself to be taken. What an interesting case that is. And what makes it even more compelling is on that same day, just hours later, there was another case that's almost identical to it. I call this case, We Just Want Your Dog. It took place on November 6, again, 1957, in Everettstown, New Jersey, there are two witnesses to this case, and it's quite a compelling case because, as it turns out, November 6 was a huge day in UFO history. There were sightings and landings taking place all over the world, which I think adds a level of confirmation to this case and, of course, the one before it. That same evening, on November 6, 1957, around 6 p.m., this is only hours after the above case, John Trasco and his wife, Ellen, were in their home in Everettstown, New Jersey. John had just returned from his job at the local paper mill and stepped out to feed their dog, King, who he describes as a six-year-old, charcoal-colored, half-blind, bad-tempered Belgian police dog. They kept him tied up to the side of the house, and shortly after John Trasco stepped outside, his wife, Ellen, heard the dog, King, barking furiously. She looked outside and saw a strange reflection in the yard, and staring at it, she realized this wasn't a reflection, but was in fact a glowing egg-shaped object, about 9 to 12 feet long, hovering in the sky and bobbing up and down in this weird manner. Meanwhile, her husband John also saw the craft, and he said, approaching him from the direction of the craft was a strange, short, humanoid figure. As John says, I looked, and I seen a little man. He came down towards me, and he said, Don't be afraid. I don't mean any harm. So, I got a little closer to him, and started talking to him about the dog. And he said, Don't be afraid. We're friendly people. We don't mean any harm. I started shaking. I was scared. He came up to me and said, Would you like to give us your dog? We'd like to have it. According to John, the man spoke very slowly in English, with kind, what sounded kind of like a German accent, spoke in a very sharp, squeaky voice, not normal, saying, we just want your dog. Now, as John says, he was about three to four feet tall. I didn't see no flesh. The only flesh I saw was his face. He was all covered. He had some sort of cover all on. You couldn't see the hands or other parts of the body. He had shiny objects on each finger. He had a strange face. You couldn't tell whether he was a man or a woman. Now, according to John, this figure had a broad nose, light brownish skin. He said the suit was sort of a medium green color, and it had what he believed looked like shiny buttons. But this was concerning John because it was coming after his dog and he wasn't having it, and he shouted at the being, get the hell out of here and actually reached out and tried to grab this figure. The being then said, I'll be seeing you again, turned around and walked towards the craft. Now, John didn't see any portholes or doors, but just like Everett Clark says, somehow this man entered the craft, and it promptly took off. Now, John's wife, Ellen, didn't see this little figure, but she did hear his squeaky voice. She heard her husband shouting at this little man, and she also saw the craft disappear straight upwards. And later they were interviewed by newspaper reporters and members of the UFO group 
CSI, the Civilian Saucer Investigations, who conducted an hour-long interview with the Traskos. And as one of the reporters, Dick Harpster, says, I just haven't been able to think of one reason for not believing them. And in fact, Ellen Trasco told him, If it happens again, I'll probably get in the car and go far away from this place. But I told John we should have let them take King. He's half blind and so cross, I don't know who else would ever want him. Now, true to the E.T.'s promise, they did return. The UFO apparently returned the very next night when the Traskos noticed a strange red and white light hanging over the house. And as Ellen says, they didn't move as the lights of an airplane do. And after staying a while, these lights moved off. Of course, the ETs did not take the dog. So while in this case the dog was not taken on board, the ETs' interest in the dog was evident. And again, incidentally, both in the Everett Clark case and this case, they do both took place during a massive UFO wave which was sweeping across the United States. This is the first couple of weeks of November 1957. And in fact, November 6 alone accounted for dozens of cases. As researcher Lauren Gross writes, the 6th of November 1957 has to be one of the biggest days in UFO history. Here, Mr. Trasco is home in Moss 6. What is that, T-R-A-S-C-O-E, Mr. Trasco? Yeah, T-R-S-C-O. C-O. What is the first name? John. And then Mrs. Trasco's name is Ellen Trasco, and of course Dick Hobbs is here, Mary Hobster, and myself. Now, uh, this is Everettstown. This is Everettstown, New Jersey. 100 County. 100 County. You want to get the local plug in here? Can I ask him how far we're on the Delaware River? Yeah. It seems to be quite a. Well, you ask it. How far is it? How far is Everettstown from the Delaware River? What we wanted to get at, of course, was this experience that you had. Uh, I know I've read about it in the newspaper, and I think, Dick, you've personally spoken to Mrs. Trasco before, right? Mm -hmm. So suppose, Mr. Trasco, you just tell us what happened when, in your own words. Well, I came from work, and, uh, and I went down the street at Dawes, and I got alongside a house. What day was this, you recall? Well, I don't know exactly what day it was. Early part of November. Yeah. All right, but I think Mr. Trask is going to get a newspaper article. So now, as I understand, we've determined that this happened on November 6th on a Wednesday night. So uh, what time did you get home from work, Mr. Trask? Well, I come home, let's say, about 5 o'clock. What type of work do you do? Well, I work in the place on the top part down towards the barn. And I look, and I see a, a little man. But we have hedges there. I couldn't notice the saucer. So he started coming down towards me. He says, don't be afraid. I don't mean how long. So I got a little closer to him and started talking to some about the door. Then he says, we're friendly people and don't mean no harm. And I got to, you know, start shaking, you know, and be scared. By that time, I had my barn doors open. And, uh, and uh, he came again to me. He says, uh, well, you want to meet the dog? We'd we'll like to have him. So I swore at him or something. Then he just kind of around. He says, well, if he's seen you again, he, it was a wrong object. And it seemed to be holding down the ground and went up again and go about 10 feet high and then come down again. Then it come down to the trees there. Then it come towards the barn again. And then all of a sudden it's spun so fast around. Didn't see, no, didn't see the man there. And then zoomed. Right up in the end, that's a big screen of smoke. A smoke or flare. It was five o'clock, Mr. Trasco. No, it would have been after five. Was, dark it was it just, just getting dark? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was still dusk. Yeah, you could see, because I stood there petrified as a rainbow. 
you can see the song. I saw that, but, but I you can see the man in front of the... Yeah, I'll tell you, she's there on the middle of the yard. Bushes there. Yeah, I, I uh, looked out there, and from where she was standing in the kitchen, she couldn't see the man because of the bushes, but she could see the saucer. Uh, well, the first thing that attracted your attention, as I get it, was your wife knocking on the window pane. Yeah. And uh, you say she indicated to you putting her, putting her fingers towards the lawn. Uh, now, walking along the side, had you been in the house already from work, or you were just arriving from work? Well, I came in the house. He came home. Oh, then he went outside. He went out yeah. the door. Because he When she pointed that way, towards the back of the house, towards the barn, did you immediately see this man? Yeah. And at that time, was just one man you saw? Just one man. About how far away was he? I was so uh, long. And they come in when the I would say about, well, from here, I would say about 20 feet. About 20 feet? About 20 feet. What was your first reaction? Well, he started walking towards me. Well, not the way see. He was by the barn there, and he walked from the hedges, where well, he walked probably about, maybe about five to eight feet. And I kept going down slowly. Toward him? Toward him. Were you frightened at the time? Oh, I was fine, yeah. Uh, what did he probably say anything to you? Well, he says, he says to me, don't be afraid, we're friendly people. We don't mean no harm. Was he close to you then or was he far away? Well, he was, I'd say, about six feet from me. He never got any closer. When he said that, how did he talk? And are they American? Or? No, he, he talked a broken English. It's sort of like a German accent. About the tone of his voice. The uh, voice was sort of like a squeaky voice. Squeaky? Yeah, squeaky voice. With a German accent? Mm. Was it, I mean, very easy to understand or was it difficult? It was easy to understand because he talked very slow. So it was easy. He talked sort of very slow. Slow. And well, sort of on the sharp, squeaky side like. When he said, in substance, don't be afraid, how did you answer? Well, I, I swore. <laughs> well, did that did you right away? Well, I'll track me. Well, I got the picture. He said, don't be afraid. You don't mean any harm or something like that. I mean, did you answer him then? Or, uh, I mean, what the fuck did you say? Get the HR, maybe. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, he was here. Yeah. yeah. Well, can you describe his appearance a little more for us? Well, he was, well, I'll say about three to four feet tall, and I didn't see no flesh. The only flesh I see was of his face. The flesh on his face was sort of like if you take a, a pot in your knife in your hand and you, you squeeze it like that. Well, that's how his flesh was, you know, formed. Did you say there was a flesh on his face? Flesh. Flesh. Oh, flesh. Oh, flesh. Oh, flesh. Oh, flesh. Oh, flesh. Now, when he was standing with any lights nearby, or uh, how well could you see him? Well, I, I can see him pretty good. So, no lights. Yeah, that's like November 6th, about how light or dark it is then. Uh, oh, just like now, at 5.30 or 4 or 6, it's just start on, you know, some day. Once the sun goes down. You can see good, I mean, you know. How high would you say he was? About three to four feet tall. About three to four feet. In. Well, let's, let's see. Uh, I understand that now I'm about six foot. Up to what part of me would you say he'd come? Well, well just by myself, he would come up to, right up to here to me. Let's see, that would, would, that, would that be three foot? Just about three feet. Yeah, it's no more like it or less, I imagine, actually, might it not? Uh, it's a host. Was that the usual proportion, as far as you can see, his body with arms long or short, or...? His arms were, according to his size, to a short. Well, I mean, his, he was so covered. He had some sort of like coveralls on him. You couldn't see his hand, you know, his hands, or other part of the body, but just the face and the ears. Did they cover his hands? Yeah, his, his hands. And on, on top is uh, the gloves, sort of around objects, it was shiny objects. On each finger? On each finger. 
Well, would this be like a glow or like an electric light bulb? Well, they weren't lit, but they were shining. Phosphorescent it was. I, I wouldn't know. Would it have every finger? And every finger, yeah. And now, how far did this, these coveralls extend? Was it one solid piece over to his head like a snow no. cap? It, uh, it covers uh, body to the, to the neck. And then what he, the only thing he wore on his head is like a, like a tammy. Like a Scotsman wears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. 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 could you notice the ears at all? Well, I don't know. I didn't pay much attention to the ears. It seemed like it, like it was the ears we have, you know, the same shape. How about his nose? His nose was kind of on the, well, it came out this way, like. Uh, and the yard sideways. sideways. Huh? Was it a flat nose? Or no, it was like we have, but it kind of, kind of seemed wide to me. Broader. Broader. Mm. It's not as you just pushed our nose in like that, but it seemed a natural nose, but covering a larger area. Yeah. What do you say about his eyes, Mr. Trist? Well, his eyes was sort of like a, like a marble. Well, in other words, to a patron, like, the, like five eyes, you know? They threw out of you. Sockets. So there any eyelids that you can notice, or eyelashes? The cover's face was sort of like a putty color, you know, brown. But I mean, I didn't notice no eyebrows and not. I mean, I didn't, you know, I think I look, was keep looking at his face, you know, his skin. He looked undernourished. How about his mouth? I think that's sort of a heavy lips. Was the size of the mouth the size you ordinarily expect of a person? Yeah, I guess it would. It was formed on the side of his cheeks. Kind of, you know, like I was talking before, like, like a party, you squeeze it, and I, I looked at me, you know. So when you say party, I assume it's being a rather grayish color. Yeah, mean? yeah. Now, gentlemen, is this the only part of his flesh that would be exposed, would be the face? Yeah. If, if you were yeah. asked to describe him generally in some type of color, what color would you say, Mr. Trasco? Well, his face, his flesh. Well, his face, well, I would say on a light brown side, on the corner, like, like I said, like a putty. A light brown? Yeah, a light brown face. And, and uh, what were the colors of the clothing? Well, his clothing was like sort of a, well, it wasn't dark green, it was like sort of a, like a, on a light shade. It wasn't light, it wasn't too dark, maybe medium, I'd say, medium green. At this particular point where you were talking, were there any lights nearby showing out of the house? Was the lights on at that time or no? Now, how far does this be from your neighbor's house next door? Neighbor? Uh, there are people next door to you there? Yeah, there's people there. I didn't pay so much attention to coming here. How far is the nearest house? The White House, right over here. Right next to Is that right close to you here? I haven't looked. Well, there's a little shack right next to you. In between. Oh, it's about uh, 50 feet. About 50 feet. All right, we've got a description of it now. Uh, the arms didn't have like a monkey or anything like that. Is it? Yeah. No, he, he stood very straight. Uh, did you notice the type of shoes he had on? Everything was covered up. Yeah. Uh, well, other ways you say the coverall was covered yeah. shoes. The coverall the cover was covered shoes and, and his hands, uh, you know. How was it kept? Yeah. Well, uh, once he had sort of a big bumps, bumps, but they were they were flat, they're round. Uh, what color were they? The shiny, the shiny side. Do you like his fingertips, yeah? Do they seem to... I don't know if I said that they gave off light, or... I don't know, I mean, they were shining light. What I think he was trying to ask is, did they look like they had a light inside them, or were they just shiny? Just shiny or shiny, I mean, it would be, for instance, if he takes the... Shiny, or... Shiny light there, shiny like that, yeah. I mean, you could take a glass, even though there's no sun on it now, but I mean, it's so... It'll be shiny. And, you know, have any hair? I I don't know. I don't notice any hair. What kind of a material did this thing look like? It was made from cotton or rayon or wool or not? Oh no. No. Oh no. It didn't look like your shirt or anything like that. Or like a regular pair of coveralls would be cotton. Oh, probably a pair of coveralls, you know. Yeah. That wasn't shiny though. No. No. Did you notice how the wool was just dressed though? Well, he walked straight, short steps, and he walked very slow. Did he say light in 
amnesty, the heavy amnesty, can you notice? Well, I guess, well, why? I guess, that's why they said that. Well, because, I mean, the way you walk, you walk slowly, you know. I would say you walk very light. I mean, yeah, walking slowly would seem to me to just would indicate the opposite, that uh, you sort of light on the feet. I mean, heavy. One would walk slow, wouldn't it? Yeah, but there was no big marks, I don't know. No good tracks there, no. How was the weather this day, by the way? Do you recall? The weather? Rainy, clear. No, it was clear during the day. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. You have a description of it. Is there anything you have ever seen in pictures that would resemble mm -hmm. anything like ruffles, silkskin, or something like that in a fairy tale? So I can't find some objects which, for comparison purposes, are you good specialist tracer? No. I was wondering if possibly you could try to make a sketch there and fix it. You have a little foot brother on here. And you're speaking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, aren't you? Give me your picture of a caption. It's just where it was. Let our spirit, O Father, come and this young man stand to the Lord. Yes, I'll hold your concept in our... Did we have any of the other ones? 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 Oh, I see. Uh, these, these, these pictures that you mentioned, uh, you see, you got a little time in the property. We go, 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 and there was supposed to be a picture of somebody was captured? Yeah, I think it was in New Mexico, wasn't it? Oh, no, no. A man and a woman had him, had this little guy holding fast to his arms, and, and where they were standing, they had a hold of his arms, just like a child, and you know, they had his arms way up to hold fast to his hand, and he stood there, and he looked just like John described it. But he was, uh, that was the first I was seeing, it was about a couple weeks ago. that. Uh, where is it the pictures from? Do you know? I've never heard that. California. Who knows just where from home? Uh, well, did, did you mention the name at all? find out. Is it Van Tassel or the Damasby, Scully? Do you actually have a I didn't even read it now. The address. Why do you brother in law think of it generally? Oh, he's the reason. Uh, well, um, I'm going back again to the conversation. Uh, when you swore at him, what did he say then? Well, he didn't say nothing. But then he started asking me about the dog. Do you remember what specifically what he asked about the dog? He said somewhat to me, but I mean, I just was scared. And but he, he, the way John, he got in there so fast, John, he was saying, get in the thing to go. But when he asked about the dog, was, did you have the dog with you? The dog was tied right down there. Oh, is this the little dog we have here now? Or no, no. no. Great big black dog. What, what is the dog's reaction to it, by the way? Well, he was running around cycles there. Uh, he's a... Uh, partly blind. <coughs> partly blind. Just, well, about all blind. That dog is a... Uh, Very scary. Looks to uh, be a German Shepherd. Type or uh, uh, Belgian Shepherd. Belgian Shepherd. Was idea. he barking before you went down there? Yeah. Yeah. He was. Was he on a leash or? Uh, yeah. Was he trying to go for this party or? Well, he was just going around there in circles. The dog did because he couldn't see, you know. Did he have a tiny tiny dog or? Huh? I, well, we had a big pile of rocks there, and then and then rocks all fell down the bank practically. A big pile of maybe about three to four feet high. What floor is that? I don't know. I piled up to keep the. So we have back up on is a creek. And every time we have a big rain or something, I wash the waste and drown, you know. So I start building up rocks. So I left pile of maybe about three to four feet high. And I, if I had time, I could have, you know, scattered them around more. That uh, pile of rock just appeared, frankly. Well, when did you notice that? I noticed that the next morning I went down there. Did the rocks disappear or were they spread? Well, they spread. Well, I mean, they spread. Yeah, but did the dog hit them or? I don't know. Did you notice at that time when you saw this man if the rocks was No, I, I didn't notice them, no. Well, the dog kept going up and down, you know, tied up on chains, big heavy chains. 
Well, after you swore at the man, did he, uh, he asked you about the dog. Did you swear at him before he asked for the dog or after? I think I swore at him before. I don't know before or after. Uh, what did he know before? I think I was going, when I was going down towards him. I saw swearing at him. Did he, have, did he tell you why he wanted the dog? No. He didn't ask him why he wanted no, the dog? No, I didn't ask him. Uh, did he say he just wanted to, uh, was it your impression that he just wanted to see the dog, or was it your impression that he wanted to take it? Well, my impression he wanted to take the dog. Well, then, after you refused the dog, we might use that term, what happened then? Well, he didn't say nothing. Just turned around, started walk, uh, walking towards the saucer there, and... When did you first notice the saucer? Oh, when I was going down towards him. Was it behind him? Behind him, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't been outside since about 10 o'clock at night now. But was he in a direct line with the saucer in your no. vision? He was right over here, and the saucer was right in front of the barn. About how much distance would there be between them? Well, I would say maybe about 10 or 12 feet. Oh, diagonally. Diagonally? diagonally? Yeah. All right, he started walking toward the saucer now. What did, can you describe the saucer for us? Well, the saucer was round and was going at a great... Well, you said round, you mean like a ball? No, it wasn't no. on the ball side. No, it didn't. On the flat side, you know, side. It's not like this side. Let's see. Well, oh. would it be if you took a ball and cut the top and bottom off on yeah, it? Yeah. Now, how large would you say the saucer was? Well, I don't say exactly how it started. I mean, it was going nice through. Nice size to get him to go. Pardon? It was just a nice size to get him to go. Uh, you think it's good for you? Did it appear big enough that you could have got in it? Well, I don't know, but I think if it came down again, I'd make a good effort to get in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. This ceiling here, I imagine, would be about 8 foot here, right? Yeah. Would you say the height of the saucer was the height of the ceiling? A height. Well, I mean, I couldn't exactly describe the height because it came like this here, and, uh, well, the best way I would... It didn't land on the ground, it just kept... Did it make the just like the stretch of the saucer for you? The best way I would describe it on a simple way would be if you take a saucer and turn it upside down. Well, that's, that's how it would look. That's well, how it would look flat on the bottom, do you know, or was it saucer shaped in the bottom, too? Well, I, I think it was saucer shaped on the bottom. Yeah, why don't you just make a design there? 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 Why don't you just make a uh, would it be like a, a wrinkled, like an old well, person's face with a real old person there? Was it more well, pinched up? Well, it's wrinkled. Well, well, I would say it'd be heavily wrinkled because, I mean, you can, you know. Yeah. Was there a lot of lines in his face from, I mean, the corners of his eyes and his mouth? Well, I could see that, but I mean, the way his face was, what, well, so like this thing. Well, you it was a drawn. Drawn. Sounds like there were bumps on it or something. Was yeah, it looks sort of like bumps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not the kind of a face that you would normally see on, a, on, a, on an aged person. No, no. Mm -hmm. well, was the saucer perfectly round, say, like that metal thing? No. Well, why don't no. you try to well, just make a little sketch yeah. if you would there? Yeah. We'll do it on the next page, though. No, that's, that's oh, okay, fine. Yeah. I mean, it looks something like this, too. Well... That's how it looks to me. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, well, now, all right, from the, the highest point, about how high would you say it was? Up and down. You mean, uh, the saucer. The highest point is up to the lowest and the bottom. Well, let's say, could you place it in this room where it fit in this room? There's an eight foot ceiling, approximately. It probably would. And how about the width of it? Well, I, I couldn't, I couldn't give you a good description on I me mean, how big it was because it was showing local speed. 
the glass. An awful spin, rotation, was it was for all the time. All the time, yeah. And it go down. One touch the ground would go down, over, and then go up in the air again. All the time he was standing on the ground, just while he was standing, and now he's standing, would come down the ground, down and go about ten feet, uh, near the top of the roof of my barn, then I'd come down again, then I'd come over the side and over here by the tree, you had a big uh, maple tree and a whippy willow tree, he'd come in between that, then I'd come to the barn again, then I'd come to the ground again, and he's moving up and down, and, but it never stopped. Well, if we could assume that it would stop, this room is what, about a 20 foot long, would you say here? Yeah. 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 It's about 23 feet yeah. long. Yeah. And I guess more of the wall must be about 15 feet the other way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Could think they put the whole thing in here with a kit in this room? Maybe it was. Uh, were there any windows or anything like that you could see? No, I didn't see no windows at all. No. Now, what was the color of the sources? Well, it was shining. A gold shine or what kind of shine? A oh, silvery shine. A silvery shine. Because uh, you didn't see any doors or any way of getting in or out. No. All right, so he starts walking back towards the saucer. Oh, right, now what happens? And we're still holding, still going out of speed. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I didn't see him, then north he took. Well, let's see. He, he approached the saucer, right? Yeah. Well, you were watching him, right? And I was watching, yeah. How did he do? And all of a sudden, I didn't see nothing. Didn't see him go in or what. He just went so fast in there, and off they went. Uh, well, was, was he walking slowly as he approached the saucer? Yeah, he's walking slowly. How close was he to it when he disappeared from your sight? Well, as it came down, and he'd come to the saucer, then all, all of a sudden, it just disappeared. And you were watching that all this time. I was watching all the time. You, uh, didn't, uh, you, didn't, you didn't see him get in it or no. step on anything. I, I would run by the doors was open the barn. I'm right by the doors, and I kept on looking at him, and he just disappeared. Then the saucer stopped coming over. I, I turned around to look where they went. There's more big trees there, and as they went, they let a big blue flame. And then I couldn't see no more. There was smoke on the long side of trees there. Uh. Well, I just don't get the picture now. You say you went to the barn. There was a source in the other barn. Yeah, it was close to the barn. Yeah. Well, when he walked away, you said you went to the barn doors and opened them or something of that nature? Well, the barn doors were open. Did you close them? No. Before he took off, I... I stood by the barn doors, you know? Yeah. Well, well, did you follow him when he walked towards the source, or was he towards the barn too, I assume? Well, we were towards the barn doors. Yeah. Well, when he walked away, he turned his back to you? Yeah. Did you follow him there, or...? No, I, I stood still. Well, we uh, were, you weren't at the barn then, were you? You mean when you gone to the source? Yeah. Yeah, I was by the barn there, yeah. Oh, you were by the barn there? Yeah. When he says, uh, I have to have the dog, well, we were already by the barn. When you had this conversation about the dog, when you said you wanted to have the dog, were you standing still then, or? Yeah, I was standing still, yeah. Now, how far are you from the barn then? Well, it's about three feet. Oh, that, oh, well, when you first saw him, how far were you from the barn? Oh, when I first saw him, well, I was over here by the house. I said about 20 feet. Yeah, well, I was wondering how far from 20 feet. You, uh, did, did you follow him and when he walked to the barn? I walked down, you yeah. Now, I think, I think Joel probably what's, uh, what's confusing it is that uh, the dog coop is lo located on one corner of the barn. The what? The, the dog coop. Oh. And the saucer was at the other end of the barn. And uh, when he said, he, when the man walked away from him and walked towards the barn, actually he was going down along the long ways of the barn. He was walking in front of the barn, right? From the yeah. dog coop down to the other end of the barn. Well, see the saucer. Would you tell me? Yeah. Well, the saucer was uh, about uh, in the middle of the part of the barn. But why do you say they went? Well, I mean, I, uh, the saucer and the man. Oh, that's what you referred to. He's going down the side of the house. So yeah. Go. There's the barn. There's where the saucer was hovering, roughly. Here's the dog coop. Yeah. What did you walk up to here to meet you about yeah. halfway? Then you walked together back to the corner yeah. of the barn. And then you stood there talking for a few moments, and he walked down this way towards the saucer. Yeah. 
Excuse me. Lots of destructive division from the house right now. Little bushes right here. Just push it hard. Quite a few of them here. And there's some big trees down in here, and a couple of big ones over in here. Well, I assume when you walk over towards the uh, saucer, which was visible, wouldn't uh, he be visible there or from the house? No, these bushes are, are high, and as you can see from this kitchen window, down to that corner of the barn. Yeah. But she she can't see the dog coop or or this 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 area in here. Uh, the one thing that confuses me though, if I'm the little man and I am walking and say if that's the saucer over here, <laughs> do I just suddenly disappear from view and carry? Do I fade out? No. No, I mean if he if he was a little man. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, I, I walk, here's the saucer, I'm walking to it. Do all of a sudden like that, I just disappear, or do I fade out gradually, or... Well, he just disappeared quick in the, in the saucer. I soon go towards the saucer, and I go very close. And, uh, well, I, I don't know, I probably had a feeling, or I probably had, had a hunch it's going to take off, you know. So I got inside the door. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm still scared and nervous. Well, he was in the, in the doorway. The saucer was blocking the view of the man. He couldn't see him get in. Right. You stepped inside the, the doorway to the barn when you walked over here. Yeah, uh, was there any particular reason why you did that? Or? I saw it walking the air, but I stood right there. Did, was the dog with you all the time in the leash? Tied down at the coop. Kept there. Oh, well, you were walking him originally, right? Because that was understanding. No. No, he was, he was going down to feed him. Oh, two feet. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have the dog. Oh, I thought you had the dog with you. Then. No, no. No. Uh, I'm just trying to get the picture of uh, why you should go into the barn while the man is there. Like I said, he, I was about three feet from the barn. Oh, you didn't know where the barn was. Yeah. Yeah. He's going toward the saucer. Yeah. 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 Yeah
And I says to my wife, I'm going down a barn again. So I went down a barn and didn't see nothing. But the next night, I thought I was upstairs throwing my bed and I didn't have the light on. I was looking out of the window, you know, because I was still worked up about that. And right up over the barn, there was two things of great big uh, white light and a great big red light. And I thought, oh, it's a plane going. But it wasn't even moving. It was just staying stationary. Then the first year, I seen nothing. Didn't see nothing. She's the one that uh, saw this thing first, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, this, I, I want to tell you, Mr. Trasco, Mrs. Trasco, in a moment. Uh, when, did he wave goodbye or anything like that? No, he said, well, well, I'll be seeing you again. Didn't wave or nothing. But yeah, the, the only thing you said to him was that he got the picture when you swore at him. Yeah. Then this took off, you say, how does it go? Up, down, sideways, or? I went down just like, like, so like a plane would. Then what direction generally would that be? What? Up, east, up like that. Uh, there's a blue flame that I understand you say. Yeah, some blue flame like. And when it disappeared, then we see a little cloud of smoke by fire trees. There's two big trees over there, and the smoke was on between the trees. When it took off, is there any light other than the blue flames? <coughs> no, the only thing I know is the blue, blue flames light. Uh, how, how far did you see it in the sky? Well, I didn't see it long. As soon as it passed some trees, I didn't see no more. Do you have any idea of the rate of speed? I mean, roughly? No. No, you know, Jenkins says, on a terrific rate of speed. Well, what did you do immediately after that? What did I do? Yeah. I just fed the doors and come back home and and she started asking me questions and and I told her about it and, and then uh, did you beat the dogs first before you got back in? Before I come home, yeah. And I started getting tears on my eyes and and then she started talking to me again. I went upstairs and I come downstairs. I was you know, very upset, you know. The next morning I got up and I went to work. And uh, I noticed uh, some kind of green in between my fingernails. So I looked at it. Oh, then I, uh, I had green part on my wrist. That was a green part of late in the evening. But there was something in between my fingernails. What did me see my powder? I mean, it, it easily washed off from, you know, the, the next morning in the shop. Well, I mean, I don't recall you having told me that you had any physical contact with him. Did you? No, no. Well, I mean, how would you uh, tie in the green powder? How would you explain that to him? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I didn't touch him or, or got too close to him. I mean, in your, uh, when you work in the paper though, Mr. Tarasco, was that any green paint or powder? No, no. Uh, you never know that you see it. it was it on, the, on the wrist with the green powder there in the morning after this happened? No, it, it, that, same, that same evening. I know it's a green powder on my wrist. Well, it wasn't much, you know, but just a little bit, you know. But no, in the morning I had it in between my fingernails. Well, I don't think it was any kind of, I, mean, I didn't pay attention, you know what I mean. What makes you uh, think that there may be a, a tie between the green paint on your wrist and, the, and this thing that you... Well, I mean, I, I don't have none green lights at home. And then the shop, we don't use that. Because the department I work, uh, we cut rope. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing I wanted before we start working. Well, let's turn to Mrs. Frasco for a moment. Suppose you tell us... What you have personal not, not so much what your husband told you, what you actually saw. Well, he went out to see the dogs, and uh, I was getting supper. I was over there by the cabinet, and I just looked out the window, and King was barking like mad, and I figured, oh, it's the baker, because he always barked the truck, so I'm not paying much attention. But I looked out the window, and I saw this here. The old 
brown, shiny thing down there. You know? First thing I thought, these kids haven't got a lake down there, you know? How far was this from the house about, excuse me? Huh? How far off the, the window where you were standing was this? Oh, it's not about 90 feet. I think. Is the barn that far back? Then? Because the property is 172 long from the road to the creek. So uh, I just stood there, you know, I didn't know what to do, and I went by the bank there. I was, you know, and I banged on the window for him. Could you see your husband at that time? Yeah, he was sitting right there then, going down, say. The wrong side of the house behind it. Yeah, right here, by the house. Wrong side. Was he in a position then where he couldn't see in the... He didn't see, he didn't see it then, I, no. So he couldn't have seen it in the position where he was? Well, what? The saucer? I could have. Yeah. I could have. He could have seen it. Yeah. I could have seen it. But he wasn't looking down. I could have seen because... When I go through the doors, I can take tack is between my feet. And, I mean, by the way, otherwise if I, the cat wasn't going between my feet, I could have seen myself. So I banged on the window and I was like that, pointed down like that, and feet up down, and away he went, going down there. And I, I heard him in the talk, and I couldn't... Uh, you know, understand anything because the thing is real close, you know. Uh, well, what could he, uh, you say, because you could hear him talking, you yeah. mean, your husband? Hollering. <laughs> yeah. uh, what could he hear when he hollered? Well, I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't say what he was hollering, but I heard his voice. You no. know, I couldn't. What part of your husband could you see? I could see his back. And he, could, he was facing towards the. You know, not towards the barn, but towards the, on the where that saucer was, you know. Yeah. From it. Did you see his legs there? Yeah. Back. Back down. Why, if anything, why is there obstructing the vision to see the little man? Well, there was a uh, lilac bush, some um, kind of old shrub up there, and uh, it still had the green stuff on it. In my view, of what he did, whoever he was talking to, you know, but my view wasn't obstructed from this uh, shining object down there. Did you notice the position of the saucer, what we call it a saucer there, while he was talking? Yeah, it was uh, like on the egg shaped side and just, just going up and down. How high up did it seem to you it was going? Left. How high up did it seem to you as it was going? Oh, it was about six feet up and that was the end. But it never touched the ground. What was your immediate reaction then? How did you feel? I was scared to death. <laughs> now, from, from the time you knocked on the window to indicate to your husband, how long was it before the saucer left? Well, I guess it was about what would you say? I don't know, to me it seemed like an eternity. <laughs> I guess maybe about three minutes or something like that. Uh, could you hear any other sounds other than your husband hollering? No. Did you have a tendency to go out the house to see if it was happening? I couldn't. I just stood there. I, I couldn't even move. Uh, how would you describe? So sparking like me. How would you describe the story as it took off? Well, as it took off, in my view, it was just, I'm up higher here. It went, uh, went up, it's wish, and the big tree was down there, and then the, it went right, it went right straight up, and then it swished right on up over the barn. And then it was like the blue came out of it, and then it, and then it was like pinkish. But I don't think John could see that because he was standing in the, in, in the barn right there. And, you know, and the, but then uh, there was nothing after that. Oh, was well, your husband in your line of view all the time? No. That's why I was just scared. Well, did, did he walk out of sight? Well, yeah, due to the fact that those lilac bushes and shrubbery there and I couldn't see him. The only uh, way that you can see is directly right straight down. Yeah, well, maybe later on I take a look out there myself. You don't wait up to mud up to your hips, though. Oh, well, it's a little, uh... <laughs> I took a couple of photographs I have. Uh, oh, did you do? Yeah. Oh. 
When you saw this, did you think it was a flying saucer? When I first saw it, I I thought it was a bunch, of, you know, a lot of water down there or something. And then when I saw the thing moving, and I why did you think it was a saucer? I think it was a saucer. Did you have any idea that there was any occupant who had been in it at that time? No. What, when was the first time you realized that? What, there was someone in it? Yeah. Well, I think there must be someone in it. It wouldn't be going up and down itself. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't hear any sound from the little man or woman or whatever it was. Did you immediately think of this incident down in Tennessee about, when your husband told you the story about the one with the dog, uh, did you immediately think about this incident down in Knoxville, Tennessee with the clock boy? Did that come I didn't up? even know anything about that until we read that the next night in the paper. Oh, that, that was the first you heard of that? The next night in our paper we uh, read that. That was November 7th. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, how, uh, how, how do you tell me before how the newspapers got hold of the story? Well, I I called up my brother-in-law. He, he was over to my dad's house. Over when was that? Creek Road. That same night. Yes. And I told him about it. And uh, he says, no kidding, he says. So the next day, see, he had a week's vacation. He was up from Norway. The next day, he goes down to Frenchtown. He tells Fred Sykes. Fred Sykes, who is he? Uh, he used to be the uh, motor vehicle man. He just right, uh, right by the Dollar Valley News there. He has the building there, the Dollar Valley News, the rents that's coming. So he told Fred Sykes, and uh, Fred went right to the news and told the news. And, and then I think that night, the... You say Fred Sykes told the news? Yeah, told the news about it. Oh, is that the paper? The Dollar Valley. Dollar Valley. Oh, yeah, I see, yes. And uh, then, the, then this here woman called me up. So I uh, heard about your experience. And I said, well, who told you? She said, well, the news gets around. So then Ray said that he had told Fred, and Fred had told the news. So we didn't go to the paper, so then they came up and took the pictures. Did you check with your neighbors at all to see if they had seen anything? No, well, as a matter of fact, in the house next door, the, what, the house wasn't occupied, and the house below that wasn't occupied. And the people up here next to us, they, uh, I mean, weren't doing good to check with them because they, they were not. <laughs> but you've never heard, uh, since that time, you've never heard of anybody in this town that uh, did see it. No. Because uh, in the daytime, you could see this place. It's actually, there's quite a number of homes looked down on in this uh, particular area where this thing landed. Incidentally, on the story in Tennessee there about the dog, you recall what paper you read that in? The Eastern Express, we take. Oh, uh, oh, oh, the Eastern Express carried it. I don't know. That Jim Stable yeah. paper? Yeah. I don't remember the name of the paper and where it was from. But I well, is the paper delivered to your house every day? Yeah, in the afternoon. Yeah, well, that's, well that's the paper in, the delivered to your house you read it in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it, it happened to the Eastern Express, I guess, and wasn't it? That's the only paper you get. Yeah, I don't know. That's a weekly. Yeah. I don't know. Do you compare it at all with the Schmidt incident in Nebraska when you first saw it? Did you think of that? I read the, I don't know, it was the next night, the night after it in the paper. I didn't say anything to John about it. Well, he sees something in the paper, and I see something in the paper. We don't even tell each other. I mean, you know, we just read things <laughs> we can tell. Yeah, I assume had you at that time read about the scientists down in Level and Texas around there, or on White well, that, that was in the paper, too, uh, right with that same story, oh. I think. Has there been anything in the papers at all about flying sources on the day that you've seen it in the 60s? No, not that I know. Had you, Mr. Trasco, or Mrs. Trasco, had any interest in sources at all before? No, uh, I didn't believe it. What do you think now? <laughs> oh, I kind of think that I'm um, one of their chosen favorites. <laughs> no. Do uh, uh, you think that seriously? Or? Yeah. I you know, when I've seen it, when I've seen it, I, I told her, I said, don't you dare tell anybody about the sin. She could tell her brother-in-law. 
see them all, I didn't think they would tell Fred, because they said they'd be back, you know. Fred says, well, you scared them away. Is that why you uh, told her not to mention because you thought they might be back? No. Well, we, the uh, reason John says not to tell anybody because this town is a small town. And uh, they don't believe anything, you know. And, uh, and uh, they never seen it, but they eat their hearts out. Then, uh, at the second, at the second instant, I was saying when I was coming down to Afghanistan Hill, I seen you see four objects. So I came home and I told my wife about it. I said, just don't tell nobody. But I did, but I did tell them myself. I told them about the law. Oh, <laughs> How long after was that, Mr. Trask? Oh, I went up, oh, I about two or three weeks, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, I think, I didn't know if we put this in tape before. What did you see, as far as you can recall? Well, there were wrong objects. There were three, one back of each other's tree, and then one quite a ways from the rest. What were you doing at the time? Well, I was trying to car. I was coming down a hill, and I thought it was the reflection, you know, on my car, you know. I got a blue car. So I rolled the window down, I slowed down a hill, but I didn't come to a stop. And I still see, you know, to be sure, you know, I kept on looking, whether it's, I'm seeing things or what. But I mean, I seen it. Uh, how far? Well, no reflection or nothing. Do you allow well, at the time? Yeah. Has come home from work. How high up were they about? Oh, I wouldn't know. They weren't close to the ground, were they? No, no. They're, they're up, yeah. Right overhead or in the angle? No. Up that way, like. On my left. About a 45 degree angle. Or something like that. There were three. Could you get any idea of the size of the shape? No. We were very high up, like a high fly airplane or. Well, well I mean, if, if they were all overhead, I would say that they would be high, but, but this way, I mean, I couldn't say whether they were high, but they wouldn't have been low. There were any hills, I mean, at which you could sort of compare the height? No. Well, I mean, could, how about the shape? Could you tell? They were around. I mean, could you tell? Yeah, they were you know, airplanes, something like that. No, they weren't airplanes, no. Any noise you can see? No. And they the trail? Huh? They the trail? I mean, you know. What time of the day was this? Well, about 4 30. Yeah, it was light. It was light. I, I get home about 20 minutes to 5, so I passed through French on about 4 30. How well did you watch them? Over a few minutes until I got them down the bottom of the hill when I didn't see them anymore. They went out of sight. Well, well, he was on the hill, you know, like down the valley. Down the hill. I mean, in other words, they went out of your range of vision. Yeah. Yeah. The work in question is disappearing from sight now because of the distance. Mm -hmm. I have any idea of their speed, approximately. No. Is it an airplane or if it was a jet? I couldn't tell a speed and I couldn't tell a height or a oh. You were mentioned Mrs. Trasco, the next night you saw something. Yeah. So what was that again? Well, I saw two lights, a blue and a bottom one, and a big white light and a big red light. Well, how high, how high over the bottom would you say? I say it was about uh, 50 feet. Which one? Up in the air. Uh, which but light? Hmm? Which light? But There's a big white one and a big red one and another big white one and another big red one. One was right up over top of the other one. Two things, and they were just like this. And I thought it was maybe it was a plane going through. I was watching to see the green light, you know, that was red and green on the plane. And it wasn't even moving. And I stood there looking out the gas in the window, and then suddenly it was nothing. This is was your husband home at the time? He was down on the television, and I told him about Did you come up then? No. Could you discern any outline around the light? No, just like a... A great big white light, a big red light. Was sort of that illuminated the surrounding area with that bright? Well, uh, the white light was uh, very bright, and the red light was a real bright red. You know. I mean, enough to, you could look around, it's either attached to an object or... No, just so I could think. How long did they last there? I stood there maybe about a couple minutes looking at it because it was partially, you know, it was near. Didn't even hear a noise. Were they stationary? Stationary. What finally happened to them? Just, just, just like that. 
Did you feel any place to go out the house or? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> Did it light up the barn? No. And you were saying you uh, felt you interpreted this that there might be some reason why they were, you had this experience? Well, I don't know. I, it was a mystery to me. I mean, before, uh, when the saucer was down here, I didn't see any red light or flame from it or anything. But at night there, I saw this big red light and a big white light. And if anybody had been looking out the window, they would have seen the same thing. Since that time, have you seen anything? Yeah. Uh, how about before that time? Have you seen anything that might seem to be a flying saucer? Yeah, I, uh, what was this, about four years ago when we were going to Lambertville. And I had my daughter with me. We were, she was in the back seat, John was there, and I was sitting in the front seat. And uh, I said, Look, Annie, up in the sky. I said, See that shiny object? She says, Yeah. And it was round, you know. And she said, well, that's no airplane, Mommy. And I said, well, I know it isn't. Well, John couldn't see because he was driving. And it was on my side. So we looked again and we didn't see anything. How long do you think you saw that all told? Hmm? How long of all told did you see that? Oh, maybe it was about a minute. It just disappeared. Did it go out of your range of vision or just disappear? It disappeared. Go out of range of vision. Why did you think it was at that time? She said, Mommy, that's a flying saucer. How old is your daughter then? Well, she's, uh, she's turned 18. How old was she? Well, I think, <laughs> I guess, it must be four years. Uh, was she home tonight? That it's about 14, she was. Was she home tonight that you had this experience? No, no she's, she's married. Oh, she's married now. Uh, was she interested in sources? No. no. At that time, uh, was that the first time you'd seen anything that was or could be a flying saucer? At that time? Yeah. Yeah, that was... Had you been interested before that? Is that a way to be interested? No, I was never interested. I, I uh, heard about it and all that. But it was no plane because uh, it was round, shiny. Yes. But did you feel at that time this was a flying saucer when you saw it yourself? Uh, I'm going to, up to that time, this is four years back, had you, not, had you had the opportunity to read anything about that? No. Yeah, you mentioned before you thought that uh, there um, might be some reason uh, that you were chosen for this experience. Uh, would you have any idea why you, why you might be particularly chosen? I don't know. Did you have any mental feeling at all at the time this happened or any other time? No, not really. There's been many, many uh, the cases that have been reported. I had that. <coughs> Excuse me. I had the mental feeling that night when I was bed that I was going to see something and when I saw those objects. That, that was the night afterwards. Mm. Did you ever have the feeling of getting to see something? Yeah. Did, did you? No. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the little... They will be back? What's your guess? I know it's pure, but your guess is where they come from. Do you have any idea? I thought they were Venetian. Well, what left you with that impression? Mm-hmm. What left you the impression that they'd be Well, it might have said they were so kind. Yeah, well, I'm going to say kind. Uh, but would you say kind or peaceful? Well, kind. Well, that's so peaceful, peaceful. Yeah. Uh, well, I just kind of uh, thought you thought I may be a little out of truth if I am, excuse me. But uh, well, why would you figure that the Venusian would be peaceful? I don't know. I just think they are. I mean, would that be based on what you might have prayed or read? Or? Did it, uh, did you have any uh, ninja on the radio or anything? <laughs> Do you ever listen to the party line at night, uh, or don't you are at midnight? I never listen to the radio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, W.O.R. news. <laughs> oh. You never hear at night the Long John Show? What is that? Um, at midnight. Well, on, on the, the party line. party line, yeah. No, on radio. No. Midnight on the Yeah. Um, you, you never met Benji yourself, did you? No, I never met what does your brother-in-law think of him? He likes him. He likes him. He likes him. I never met him. 
friend at the time? Or oh, yeah, very, uh, very funny, yeah. And you never asked him who he was or where no. he was from or why he was here or no. nothing? <laughs> Do you think he could have taken that dog? That's a pretty good sized dog. Yeah. Do you think he could have taken it? Probably would have. Could have. Oh, I think they have the power to do it. How do you figure it all out now? What do you mean? How and why it happened? Do you have any ideas? No. We did not at the time. We came home and found the dog gone. We were no good. She'll be looking. Do you think that there's any possibility that the ship might have been visible only to you for any reason? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking here it is in pretty open view and seems quite a few houses I mean, there. To me, it was clear visible. And also my wife, I mean, according to the source, it was very shiny. Like sh it must have been more to him than to me because I... Shiny know. object. Could have been invisible to anybody. Yeah. I mean, well, I would not say about the, about the man, because, I mean, you say he was camouflaged, he had, had a green coveralls on, so, uh, matching to the grass, the lawn, you know, so they, he could have been visible, you know, from, to somebody from the distance, you know, he would say 50 feet. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure with this claim and the noise, uh, how do you figure that uh, some other people didn't see it? Did you hear? Did, did you hear well, anything, uh, Mrs. Transco? Probably there was nobody at uh, home. A lot of people, you know, there was. They worked on different shifts and stuff. And as I said, the house next to us was unoccupied. And two houses house house. unoccupied, and the third house. Not a house people living there. Now people have to. Well, it's just Friday. Isn't it? Could you hear the noise from where you were? Standing? No, I hear King Park, and I have a hearing aid. But, uh, I pick up all the different sounds. You didn't get any uh, sense of a, a noise from that, uh, yeah. from the ship. Okay, uh, going back to these pictures again, which I find most interesting. Uh, you, you saw the pictures, Mr. Trask, yeah. with your brother-in-law sitting yeah. over. Did you, did you think it looked pretty much mm -hmm. like this man? Well, the saucer did, but well, the man, he was very thin. He was awful thin, but he didn't have any coveralls on. No. It was your man's, what, pretty well? Skinny. Pretty heavy, would you say? Arms yeah, at least so heavy. So skinny, and his hands look so long, like, you know. Bones. And his people had a whole lot of Very bones. No hat on. No, yeah, no hat on. No. Your, your man was uh, more on the heavy side, huh? On the heavy side. Heavily built. Yeah. How did he just cover all the well, well, these pictures, uh, they're quite fascinating. I've you know, heard a picture of a little man before. Are uh, they supposed to be uh, genuine pictures? Or? Yeah. yeah, he was standing between two men. And they had one, one man. One man. And he had trench coat on a hat. Um, no, he was standing between two are men. Are these pictures they sell or? Uh, yeah, no, I got an old boy for 65 cents a why don't, you, why don't you find out how to get a hold of her brother in law? And, uh, oh, we're going on to his son then. And uh, get, find out where he got him from. Send him for him. So maybe you could do that, Dick, because uh, as I say, I don't get out here too often. The source that you saw it looked like the source from the pictures? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, the one taken right the city of Los Angeles. And the uh, others was taken in different places, I forget. Well, I think I had three pictures then. But if you uh, want to contact him, you'll be there to show you yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give him a phone phone out to send one. Uh, outside of the local Delaware Valley newspaper reporter, uh, anyone, has anyone else seen you or talked to you about this? Or? Oh, this card I got the other day, and then there was a uh, minister from our winner over. He was a a minister from where? Or a winner, Pennsylvania. Or a winner? Or a winner, yeah. Very close with the last time. And mm -hmm. what did he think about it? Well, he believes that. Um, wanted us to give him a story and he drew a picture of the, the man. He was pretty good enough. He did. Mm -hmm. Didn't leave a copy, did he? No, she oh. didn't. Yeah, I wish he had. I'm not very good at sketching. You would say it was more. I think by numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. That was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that one, by the way. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not sure.
This one up here. A couple upstairs. I'd like to take a look. I need to pick up myself a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just autograph it, that's it. That's sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like to do that. Yeah, that's good. That takes patience, though, to do yeah. that. And you know, uh, you're in the Army, Mr. Chesco. Yeah. Ha have you ever had any interest at all in uh, metaphysics, anything like that? Had the what? Metaphysics and interest in anything like that before? Yeah. Did you speak at all? I don't know uh, what uh, church you go to. Do you minister or anything? Do you have a priest? Uh, yeah. Who was this uh, fellow from Irwin after you? Um, matter of fact, I think he... Uh, I think it's a picture of the Jehovah Witness. Didn't you tell me somebody had contacted you? Somebody? Yeah. The Tenecum Church. The Tenecum Church? Do you think there's any religious significance to this? I don't know. It seems very interesting. No, I mean, personally, do you get the feeling there might be religion connected with this? I'll say good thing. Yeah, it's just that it's possible. Well. So it was our smite supply of questions. Um, this must have been about four months ago. That has happened since then, right? Yeah, the early Paul Venter, I believe, for one, and uh, various others, uh, have always spoken about some type of metal or telepathic communication. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Yeah. Have you ever experienced anything similar? For me? Yeah. No, just that night when I went upstairs, I just had a feeling I was going to see something. And I started crying. Matter of fact, I haven't been staring at the sky for over a month. Maybe now. Well, that's when I bought a Sputnik. Of course, Sputnik was thrown away the first time. Why don't you go Mr. Trasco, around here? And Did you make a long arm? Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Over in Long Beach, where he's not far off. <laughs> we bought this house in 1949. Did you work for a paper mill out there? No, over here. Oh, yeah. didn't one move from somewhere around Patterson or something down here? Or? I don't know.